I've owned three different jets in my life and I and used them and just burning them up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Televangelist Jesse Duplantis says God himself told him it's time for an upgrade. He said, I want you to believe me for a Falcon 7X. So I said, okay. A Falcon 7 jet like this one to preach to more people around the world. And he's asking his followers for the $54 million. I really believe that if Jesus was physically on the earth today, he wouldn't be riding a donkey. From his Louisiana headquarters, Duplantis is among a group of televangelists who preach that their wealth is God's will. This preys upon the poorest people that want and need money badly, where they're told if they give money, God's going to bless them a hundredfold. Duplantis lives in a 35,000 square foot mansion, tax free. He's asking everybody who has less than he has to pay for this jet, and I, I don't get that, you know? Fellow televangelist Kenneth Copeland recently bought a $36 million Gulfstream 5 jet. Praise God. Isn't that good? The two have commiserated about how they can't fly or pray with commercial airline passengers. This dope-filled world, right. and get in, an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right, that's exactly the And it, it's deadly. You know, this clip doesn't exactly make me angry. It just makes me very sad that somebody would believe that and that other people would fall for it too. Over $50 million for a new jet when you already have two of them. Did God ask him to? No. No. Here's another scene that I see every day. Um, I wonder what these people would say to God wanting him to have a fifty million dollar jet. You see my point? <laughs> you know, we forget what God asked us to do. He didn't ask us to have a lot of money and spend extravagantly and live extravagantly. Really? He asked us to be givers, to give to the poor, to make sure that people around us are taken care of, to, you know, to step out and make a difference in people's world and not just this name it and claim it gospel I'm so tired of. I'm so tired of it. It's been going on for so long and people are still falling for it. And maybe you're one of them. It makes me sad. You know, God loves us so much that he gave Jesus to us as an example. And Jesus died on the cross for our sin. But even more than that, he came and lived among us for a while to show us how to live, to show us what compassion was all about. Never owned a home. I think it's interesting that this evangelist says, you know, Jesus wouldn't be riding no donkey. Well, he didn't ride a donkey much. He walked. <laughs> Would he be riding in a $50 million jet? Absolutely not. Not the Jesus I know. Here's the point. God loves us so much that he died for us, that he's concerned about the people around us, and that he asked us to be involved in the kind of love that he showed to us. What kind of love? Unconditional love. And how do we do that? He said taking care of the widows and the orphans to feed the homeless, you know, to, to or feed the hungry, to, to, uh, to house the homeless, to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. He says, because when you've done this to the least of these, my brethren, you've done this for me. Now, that's what he asked us to do. A little different picture than I need a, another jet, and this one is $50 million plus, uh, because I don't want to make any stops on the way. 
Seriously. Seriously. Oh, my gosh. It just makes me sad. It makes me sad. It makes me sad that people have such a distorted view on who God is. Let me give you to you just in capsulized, uh, you know, nuts and bolts. This is Christianity. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's where it starts. And when we get to know that kind of love, the greed, the hoarding, the things that I feel like I have to have for myself begin to disappear. And I begin to love people around me, well, to the point where, you know, I begin to get involved. I begin to help those in need. Because you see, this is what happens when you love people. That's why Jesus gave us specific instructions. You know, the homeless, the hungry, the, you know, the naked, the whatever. He says, this is what love is all about. Not that you gain all this worldly possessions on your own. You know, it's all going to burn. And when it does, where are you? But that we actually are involved because... He loved us first, and we love in return. I have trouble getting people involved in homeless ministry. I really do. I, today, I'm trying to figure out how to keep things going, trying to figure out who can help. I need people to clean. <laughs> I need people to help prepare food. I need people to help serve. I, I'm shorthanded, so shorthanded, and the need is so big. And when I see a video like this, it just breaks my heart because I feel like we're just going in the wrong directions and the things that are really important, we're not doing. Well, this is probably a little more of my rant for the day, but I wanted to share it with you because I really want us to be careful what, with what captures our hearts what we believe, what we swallow, what we're gullible to. Please don't send any money to raise money for that jet. Please don't. If you want to invest in something, invest in people around you. Invest in people who need you. Invest first of all you, and then whatever God instructs you to give beyond that, because there are a whole lot of people that need you. God bless you. Have a great day.